Here's a case that illustrates the importance of being in the right place at the right time. The patient is a 31-year-old G6P1 at 42 and 3 7 weeks, now complete in pushing. At 2110, one hour and 10 minutes after beginning to push, the patient's fetal heart rate tracing maintains its moderate variability. 10 minutes later at 2120, a prolonged acceleration occurs, two and a half minutes in duration, dropping to a nadir of 60 beats per minute. Pushing ineffectively, the patient is offered the option of an assisted delivery. The providers presume the decelerations may deepen with forceps application and decide to do a trial of forceps in the operating room. At 2130, the patient arrives in the OR. Her tracing continues to have moderate variability despite recurrent prolonged decelerations lasting for two minutes or more. The baseline fetal heart rate remains tachycardic at 180. At 2135, the forceps are applied, and over the next eight minutes, three pulls are attempted. The prolonged decelerations deepen with each pull. The physicians pause and reevaluate the situation. The lack of descent with each pull and the continued recurrent variable and prolonged deceleration cause the physicians to decide to abandon their efforts at instrumental delivery and move to cesarean section. The patient agrees with the plan. After removing the forceps, the variability is reevaluated. The variability now appears more smooth, blunted, and flatter than before. The patient and the room are ready for cesarean section. Two minutes later, the patient has another deceleration, and over the next two and a half minutes, the fetal heart rate drops to 90 recovers to a fetal heart rate of 150 for 30 seconds, and then continues to drop to 60. The tracing, which had continued to retain its moderate variability, is now completely smooth, flat, and blunted. Over the next 19 minutes, the fetal heart rate oscillates between 60 and 100 beats per minute, with brief periods of an increased fetal heart rate to 150. The loss of variability and the depth of the deceleration surprised the providers in the room, who assumed the fetal heart rate would improve once the forceps were abandoned. 16 minutes after the fetal heart rate first dropped to 60, a 36-25 gram female is born with an APGAR score of 4 and 8. The cord umbilical artery gas is 6.89, 97, 11, and minus 18, and the cord umbilical venous gas is 6.96, 85, 18, and minus 16. Fortunately, the significant acidosis that was present at birth was quickly eliminated with positive pressure ventilation, and neonatal vigor was present at five minutes. This case should remind us all that in labor and delivery, situations change rapidly, and any degradation of vigilance can result in the failure to respond quickly to unexpected and potential dangerous changes in fetal or maternal condition.